Hello, so I thought I'd just name a stream after a different gas mask each time I start one. So here we go, the Israeli Shalon 4A1. Um, hopefully the voice diaphragm is good enough on this that you can actually hear me a bit. Even Delta Aid. Alright, GP5. Also, I've got a plaster there, so the mask's putting a bit of pressure on that, but oh well. Oh, that's good, Peach. Right, Richard? Yeah, the voice diaphragm on this is just underneath the filter port. Um, so, yeah, I've never really sort of seen how well it works. But, yeah, it's fairly good for, I guess. This is the filter that came with my Climax 731. So it's just a 40 millimeter P3 filter or P100 filter. So you can see there it's a paper heaper filter. Now, I had like a little spot or like a cut there. And then it opened up earlier and it was just bleeding because head wounds tend to always bleed quite a lot. So I just stuck a plaster on while it heals up. Yeah, technically this is originally a Draeger design and Israel just made them because originally it's a Draeger simplex. Cheers, Howard. Mine doesn't. Mine just smells like a normal rubber mask. Um... I'll just take it off. Mine doesn't have any particular smell to it. Yeah, mine just smells like a very faint rubber smell. It's not really got... um. Yeah, but I think, Peach, there are actually moulds done of these because it'd be more expensive to do these as an actual, um, you know, like, thing than it would be just to do this. That's cool. So that's the Canadian C3 that's been exported, isn't it, the Dutch one? Has it got the really cool mesh kind of uh, cover on it? This one, let's have a look what the straps say. 1987, this particular one. I don't know how well you can see that on there, if it focuses. I always think this mask looks quite cool on the inside because it's quite simple looking on the inside. It looks quite, you know, creepy for a first person kind of thing. And I, yeah, I know that when you see them first person in reality, they never look like this. It's just it's a bit annoying trying to get this. This just, I think, because it's got that kind of um, round lenses on the inside, the oral nasal cup. Interestingly enough, I think it's got the glasses sort of bit in here, not that I've got them on. Yeah, the mask says 89 on the inside. Although a bit of it also says 91, so make your own mind up when it actually was from. That stamp says 89, the rubber actual moulding says 91, but sometimes it's because individual components of the mask were made in different years and then assembled. Yeah, it's the civilian mask for the Israelis, so it's um yeah fully NBC rated, that's why they made it. Ah, that's great, Richard. I'm glad you finally got your longbow sorted you wanted. I've got more than one now, random sod, but it's um, my Avon FM12 with a filter. That's in the car boot. And then in the other bit of the car boot, I've also got the um, a couple of half face masks. You have to apologize because apologize, so I've got a cold. So if I'm doing this, it's just because I've got a cold. But... Um, so, I've got the Alpha Mesh particle filter mask, the 3M7500 particle filters, and I've also got the Spaciani TR2002 in my car now as well. Ah, oh, $15 isn't, sorry, 15 euros isn't bad at all for a C3. Skyrim's alright, especially if it's cheap. It's one of those games where it's definitely not the best RPG ever made. It's very popular, obviously. But yeah, Skyrim's fine. Um, but I prefer the older Elder Scrolls games, but I think that's just because I prefer them having more content. Uh, new card is... Mm, apparently there's a game mode in it, which is going to be one of the things in it, Mike, that's, um, annoyingly, not very... Um, I don't think it's in the beta at the moment. It's just like the classic game modes are in the beta, you know, like Team Deathmatch, Conquest and all those. 
whatever they call them. But um, annoyingly, from what I've played of it, it's just like every other COD, just, you know, a couple of different gameplay design choices, but nothing major. Yeah, guns would still work in gas. Oh, the uh, plaster on my head, as I was saying earlier, I'd, I have a small cut on my head. It's been there for a while. They actually opened up the cut today, so I've just got plaster on because I didn't want to keep bleeding everywhere. Yeah, GP5Ms look cool. Right, I'm blocking the person that just keeps spamming random words in the chat. Um, who's not said anything worthwhile so far in the stream. Yeah, as far as I'm aware, there's no chemical warfare agents that would stop the firearm from functioning. Um, again, some of them might damage a gun faster, in terms of like blister, certain blister agents might eat into parts of the gun, but none of them would actually stop a gun from physically, you know, firing and cycling. Those aren't actual masks, chin strap, they're just these rebranded. I don't play War Thunder anymore, GP5. I used to play it a while ago. Uh, I just got bored of all kind of Gaijin's bullshit in it. Um, work today, I've got a cold, feel ill, but otherwise not too bad. <laughs> What's the oldest mask I have? As I said before, can't tell you. Just because I've got a couple of interwar masks in before World War One and World War Two, where the dates are worn off, so I don't actually know which of them is the oldest. Yeah, so I was just saying that, in theory, something like blister agents could damage the gun, but I don't think they'd rust it so fast it wouldn't function. Uh, how do you know you need to change the filter on your gas mask? Because if it's a vapour filter, like an NBC filter, if you start smelling things through the filter, it means the filter's running out. Um, with a particulate filter... If it starts getting clogged and air isn't flowing through it, that's when you know. Um, TF1 is more modern, uh, but the GP5's metal assembly is probably better. So in some ways I'd say the GP5, even though TF1's are cheaper now actually than GP5's. Right, you have to let me know if the connection on the stream's final, so don't forget to like the stream, because it says only eight people have liked it so far out of about 31 people being on. Um, but yeah, in regards to um, yesterday, you have to let me know if um, the stream plays all right, because when I was trying to watch Weapon Collector's stream yesterday, I kept having an issue where it was like buffering, and then at one point it let me watch about 30, 40 minutes, and then it went back to just doing that buffering thing. I tried it with um, a couple of other people's streams as having the same issue. I wasn't having it watching regular YouTube videos, so I don't know what that was about. I don't know if it was an error on YouTube and with my router being funny or something. But All right, that's good, it's working fine. Yeah, I really don't know what was happening then the other day. What I'm just going to do is unthread this strap from here and re-thread it through, because it's actually twisted on the thing. And that means that um, it's not very comfortable to have on, so let me just... Undo the strap, and then I'll put that back. Yeah, sometimes you can F5 a stream, and that fixes it. Oh, that's cool, John. But yeah, I've had, yesterday, I was just refreshing, it wasn't doing anything. I could see some of the chat messages coming up on the right. It was just the stream wasn't actually loading up itself. So I have no clue why that was, but as I said, it seems to be right now. I've streamed Fallout 4, so I've obviously played it. Oh, yeah, because filters contain things that go off, so, yeah. Um, I've done lots of videos recommending masks, so I simply recommend you watch one of those and see what masks I've recommended in the video are also available in your country, etc. Right, this is the way the strap should be going, so it's not tangled. So let's put this back through there. It's got a three-point strap harness on this one, I guess, so it's really durable. But, um... Okay, let's make sure that threads through the right way. There we go. And I want to go back. Oh, I just blow my nose again. Sorry. Yeah, it's a bit annoying having a cold. 
depends on the brand, Mr. J. These are really theoretical questions I can't answer. Sorry, it's like saying how long is a piece of string with filter expiry. Depends how well sealed they are, what type of filter they are, what they be exposed to when you open them, all that sort of thing. Right, let's try this now and see. If that's any better. Yeah, it's comfortable enough and it seems to be that's better now though that that strap isn't horribly twisted because obviously I've done it up the right way. Yeah, but there's, I had people saying to me, oh, there's a company that you should buy a filter from this company that charge like £30 a filter because they last ages, but they don't last any longer than uh, Avon filters or like 3M filters or any other properly sealed filters. The only reason they've got a long expiry date on is because the company that makes them actually just stores them, um, you know, in like a foil wrapped kind of plastic case. Probably the Polish SR1, Connor, which is a wounded soldier's mask. So it's a mask they put on you like a straight jacket, where, you know, they tie the mask around your head kind of thing so it doesn't um, put pressure on a head wound. Nobody cared who I was until I put on the mask, GP5. Who are you? And that sounds like bullshit to me as well, Half Gravity. I got it for like twenty pounds, I think, years ago. So can't really remember now. In all honesty, Yeah, these are pretty good masks if you can find them cheap enough, because at one point these were like very cheap, widely available masks. And for the £30 or whatever they cost, they were very good for that. Just bear in mind, it's not like a polycarbonate eyepiece in these, it's actually quite weak plastic. So the lenses aren't particularly strong in these. They're good enough for like general use, but they won't give you as much protection as polycarb lenses. I don't think there's such a thing as a cosplay GP5, is there? If so, I have no idea what you're on about. Let's take that off again. Problem is I can't blow my nose with this mask on, which is the uh, grim thing at the moment, or I've got <coughs> this cold. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, it's just a case of, like, when they say replica GP5s, where they've still got the old asbestos filters, where they get a GP5 and just say, no, this is a replica, not, not the original. Yeah, that's my point, Richard, with the people who ask you, you know, questions that, you know, are completely unanswerable of themselves. I still even get comments like that on the video where it's like a 10 minute video where it's like how long the filters last. I'm like, well, you know, this isn't a simple thing. So I'm going to go over all the variables and give you like a rough time frame at the beginning and listen for more details. And even on that video, I still get people. Yeah, but how long does my particular filter last? Well, I don't know what brand filter you've got, do I? Or all the other variables. I call Peach, is that a Diac? Best metal helmet in my collection, East German M56. It's not the rarest or anything, because i got like a Stow helm and stuff like that, but the East German M56 is my favourite. Yep, I've done videos on them, GP5. The thing is, I'm just going to say this now, because I don't want to get in the mood of people. Rather than saying, do you own this, go on my channel, use the search channel button and type in what you're interested in. And I bet you, you'll find videos on a lot of this stuff. If you don't, then ask me. It's just because in general, when people say, do you own this mask, do you own that mask, do you own this helmet, do you own that helmet, quite often I do. Yes, 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 I have. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So there's your answer. No, Canadian C4s are sadly very hard to get outside of Canada and the US. So no, I don't have a Canadian C4. I'd love to get one, but... 
I'm not going to pay like 200, 300 pounds for a mask. Yep, the XM28 incident. Exactly, Shackleton. That's not the only mask I've damaged, but I've had quite a few or I've had issues with straps like that where you tighten or loosen a strap and then like a buckle or whatever snaps. Because, um, yeah, it's the issue the um, XM28 had would be like on this mask, if this bit ripped off, where they kind of, um, you know, the rubber can actually snap itself when it gets old and vulnerable. Because that was what I was saying in the video where I was saying about bits on masks that tend to break. Generally, the most often thing that will break on a mask is the straps or how the straps attach to a mask. Because that's the point you're normally putting the most tension on and off a mask all the time. Did you not watch my video, gas mask and stuff, the other day? Or like the other week I did? That loads of people watched saying my current favourite gas mask 2019 or something like that. GP6 isn't a mask. Do you mean a GP5M? No such thing as a GP6. Yeah, well, that's the reason, Shackleton, I've said before I wouldn't get all one mask, mostly because they cost a lot of money. I could afford them because, you know, obviously I buy things like the flare, but I just get more fun out of the flare than the old mask. But, you know, because I know I'm not going to look after them properly, I don't want to buy something old and, you know, that's an antique and then just destroy it. Because it's bad enough for that Japanese World War II mask I've got, where that's in such an old, bad condition. Every time I handle it, bits of it fall off, so I'm just not touching it now. I really ought to try and find a better place to store it, so it's not going to get bumped into, you know, accidentally. But where it is at the moment, it's at least, you know, not going to fall apart anymore. Maybe Amazon? Um... Well, it depends on the type of saber. Straight saber, short saber, cavalry saber. I've got a saber up there. But in general, I'd say you get more versatility from a saber. Especially if you had a relatively straight saber that's not too long. I generally prefer single-edged swords to double-edged swords, though, just because if you're not very skilled with a sword, it's easier to use a single-edged sword properly. Because I've got a cut on my head there. That's, that's the main reason for plasters, generally when you have a cut, and I've got a cut. I had one there earlier, but that's not been bleeding since I took the plaster off. But I'm going to see if the doctor will cut that off for me tomorrow. Not my ear, I'm on about that little sort of annoying mole kind of cut thing there. Um, when I go about my medication. But this, this one's just a cut that I've had for ages that never really seems to ever properly heal. And today was just one of the annoying days it's opened up. Oh, they're nice, aren't they, Rich? The, um, yeah. The broad swords that, yeah, I know what you mean, the Scotch ones. The problem is a lot of the replica World War One masks are stupidly expensive. And for a low quality replica, I'm not going to pay £100. That's just a waste of money, in my opinion. Well, there's bayonets down there, Shackleton. I don't know if you believe me, but just to prove it. There's an AKM bayonet. Does, do you know out of interest, Mike, if that's the same connection your Chinese one has on it, or is it actually a different bayonet-type connector? I know yours didn't have the wire cutter on, but I just wondered if it <coughs> had the same... Oh, my voice is going out because of the cold. Um... I just wondered if it was that same connection. Oh, dear. Yeah, hopefully I don't have to end the stream in a minute, but my voice is really going now. Right, so do you mean the bits of the button? Uh, there's that button there. That side obviously doesn't have anything on it. That side doesn't. And then that's the actual... You've got the lug there, and then you've got the uh, button that just releases the bit on that. But... Right, I've got a load of Flecton and stuff and the Draeger M65 and an M62. So yeah, I have Flecton, uh, Bundeswehr stuff. And um, I've also got the West, uh, oh, not West German, a modern German NBC suit. So yeah. Yeah, this is an old one. So it's Bakelite. It's black Bakelite. But if you look closely, you can see it's uh, Bakelite. If it focuses on it. Uh, 
At some point, oh, yeah, my voice is really going now. At some point, I might end up getting an AK-74 bayonet with, like, the brown bakelite on, because I really like the look of those. But, yeah, mine's an East German AKM bayonet with black bakelite on it. Okay, Mike. Yeah, it might work. Next time I'm over, I suppose I could always bring that bayonet up and we could see if it clicks on and off your uh, Chinese type uh, 86. That's not bad. Do you like shooting the SKS? So as the SKS is pretty practical, isn't it? Because you've got, what, 10 shots from it. Um, and it's semi-auto and same caliber as an AK, but a bit more accurate than an AK. But yeah, I do like the SKS, but obviously the AK made it pretty redundant, didn't it, in service. No, I've not got a Romanian AK, Shackleton. I've got the RPK. Uh, the problem is the RPK doesn't have the proper bayonet lug on, so I can actually show you what happens, but it won't stay on there. All right, let's just put this down a second before I bayonet it. So with this, if I get the RPK barrel, this doesn't have the proper lugging system for the bayonet. So that bit will go over there. See, but it doesn't have the bit on there. If that's in frame, probably not. Yeah, it doesn't have the bit on there, so it'll actually connect to the barrel. So it sits on the lug the same as it would with a normal AK. But if you thrust the gun forwards, it just flies off because um, obviously it would normally attach to a bit there. And the RPK doesn't have that because RPKs weren't designed to be used with bayonets. Or at least the Yugo ones were, uh, weren't. I don't know about some of the like other nations that made RPKs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, with an RPK, I don't really see why you'd be using it like a bayonet. I mean, it gives you a bit more reach, I suppose, with a bayonet if it did have one on the um, regular AKs would. But... Um, I've got the M1 carbine, and I really like it. I don't have the bayonet, so I'll leave the M1. You can get AK bayonets in the UK really cheap. D&B military are normally some for like £20 or less. Some models are worth more than others, depending on like how rare they are. Like the East German ones and the Russian ones are dirt cheap. But I think some of the nation's AKM bayonets, um, which are like, you know, or <clears throat> just AK bayonets in general, which were le less produced ones or ones that don't show up on the market as often more expensive. But they're quite good if you just wanted a really heavy duty knife for uh, using and abusing because this isn't going to break easily. Um, I actually sharpened this edge on it um, and because mine had not a tip on it, I ground a bit of a tip on there, as you can see. I know that will be sacrilege to some people grinding a tip on something like this, but I wanted it to be even sharper. But yeah, mine's functional now as a knife because apparently I was uh, chatting with some Russians about that. They were saying in Russian military service with the old bayonets, depending on what sort of role you had, you'd either be expected to sharpen them as a utility knife or keep them blunt for bayonet use. I think a lot of soldiers just sharpen them to have them as like utility knives because obviously it's got the wire cutter on there anyway. Most high quality gas mask, that's really down to opinion. I don't know what to say to that. My favourite is the Avon CT-12. Oh no, the world's most mass-produced bayonet. I ground an edge on it. Oh, I've got an SMLE number one Mark III up there. I think technically somebody said it's the Mark III star, but um, obviously I've never shot it because um, it's a Diac. Well, bayonets by default are unsharpened. Let me show you my favourite bayonet, which I'm not going to put an edge on. This is the Swiss Sturmgewehr's 57s bayonet. No edge, see? No edge. You can't cut yourself on it. Because um, bayonets are designed for stabbing. The point of a bayonet, obviously, is it thrusts into uh, humans. Originally horses, that was the original point of bayonets. Um, so musketeers could, you know, use them like pikes against charging cavalry. Um, so, yeah, for the purposes of stabbing, an open knife is generally better because it's not going to get caught inside the body as easily. It's not going to cut into ribs and then get stuck. It kind of just pushes ribs aside and then it's pulled out. Um, but yeah, 
some countries issue bayonets like utility knives where they actually want them sharpened so it's just kind of multi-purpose knife um but bayonets like this obviously as you can see are purely designed for stabbing because they're basically just like a giant dagger i really wish i had the uh bayonet for that because that's quite a similar looking thing to this it's like a short sword but sadly um they're very expensive the uh old lee enfield sword bayonets um because the thing is with bayonets in the uk sadly because a lot of sites don't sell them like i found with dmb militaria and stuff like that the bayonet prices aren't really what you'd expect like a really nice bayonet like this can often be like 30 quid that's 30 pounds sterling you know like 30 odd dollars to anybody who's not um british and doesn't know what quid means it's slang for pound um but some bayonets which are more mass produced and are like crappy looking compared to this cost way more which is why I've never got a bayonet for my SLR, because I don't want to spend, um, you know, stupid money getting a bayonet for the SLR. The only one I've got unknown Russian is this one in terms of Soviet, and this is East German. I've got the old Lee Enfield pig sticker, but I don't want to get that out because it's quite oily and it always leaves oil everywhere. I don't think most nations have cavalry anymore, do they, Ghost Jesus? Unless you mean, like, air cav and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. For that sort of money, Shackleton, that's really good. It's just obviously online, because they know people are searching for them. They can charge more. They're free to dislike the streams if they want to, leaving Zeus. You can counter that by giving it a like. Currently, there's 26 people watching, 28 likes. Yeah, well, from I won't get that down because obviously I've got all the Soviet masks displayed on it. It's basically an impromptu shelf now. But that is really nice to work the bolt on and everything. And my granddad really likes playing with that when it's not all put up like that. Because obviously he was issued with a Lee Enfield when he was in World War II. So he likes messing about with mine. Isn't it one of the triangular ones, Unknown Russian? A bit like, I'll show you the British um, cheap ass bayonet, actually, as much as I said I wasn't getting it out. Don't forget, you can support me by buying the merch from the Teespring link below. If you like the look of mugs and t shirts, all those one t shirts and everything from Teespring, you can support me via Super Chat or via Patreon. Just thought I'd throw that out there because that helps fund the stuff. And I always forget to say it, right? Let me look through this drawer. What I might do, actually, tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull this chair out of the way. I'm going to take this drawer out of the cabinet. And then what I'm going to do, I really don't know what this is doing in my drawer, but whatever, let's bin this. That's wasting space in my bayonet drawer. Um, this is the drawer a load of my bayonets and filters are in. Like the ones that aren't in satchel bags and stuff like that so oh look mike it's a zombie knife that's not a zombie knife but you know the media would call this a zombie knife this isn't a proper bayonet by the way it was just like one of those big bud k knives so slingshot warriors on bud k knife because some of the bud k knives did get sold over here at one point but these are things like oh knife crime scary this isn't a proper bayonet but i just like the look of it especially because this is only like five quid on blades and bows at one point Okay, so, what have we got in here, other than filters? As I said, what I'll do after the stream is I'll just repack this and try and get everything in neater so I can pull the drawer in and out easier. That's the FP5's bag. Oh, it's a Swiss filter. Random cable, that shouldn't be in that drawer. Stick it in a drawer full of cables. There we go. Um, another filter okay so the knife you were on about similar to the um this is the british uh, lee enfield spike bayonet annoyingly i can't put this on that lee enfield because the lugs are different on the number one lee enfields and the number fours um but yeah this is similar to the russian uh bayonets isn't it that you're on about it pretty much deadly because they're, um, all right, Marcus, good to see you. Um, because, yeah, they're the, um, like, pig sticker type ones, aren't they? 
So there we go. That's that. I've got a um, Orient uh, Mako 2 on. Oh, I've also got the time on it pretty accurate now. It seems after messing with a the regulator, then leaving it a couple of days, it seems to start changing the time properly. So, um... Oh, yeah. The FS is in there now, just for people wondering where that was. So, um, that stays in that drawer now. And it's, as I said, I'm going to rearrange this after the stream. Um, another one, the bayonets, for just for the people interested in it. Here's a Czechoslovakian VZ, um... 56, isn't it, Bayonet? This is when I resharpened, because I bought this one in damaged condition. So as you can see, I've reground the tip on, because the tip had snapped off. So I'm technically restoring this by grinding it. And then I gave it quite a good sharp edge on that side, just so it could be used as like a really ha handy purpose sort of utility knife. Uh, the flare footage is stuff filmed with a flare camera. Uh, let me show you something interesting if the flares, um, my coffee's not totally cold yet. Um, we'll get the flare out. Hang on. There we go. Put the flare on. Um, I should get a load more flare footage this week, which I'm just going to do as bonus videos. So for the people who want to watch it, other than the videos that are Wednesday, Fridays and Sundays, there should be some flare videos as well. Right. Let me uh, set this to... One of the coloured things. Uh, let's do Insta Alert where the hottest colours are orange. All right, there we go. All right, what I'm just seeing is with this mug. Yeah, see, you can see where my coffee is in the bottom of the mug. See, that's about where the coffee is. Uh, if I turn that there. See? Because um, you can see through the flare where the hot part of the mug is. So let me just try drinking that. I probably can't get this in frame, can I? then that should fade back to normal colour pretty quickly because um, it's there's no more coffee in it because obviously I finished it. So, yeah, that's, that's the interesting thing with Fleur. I wonder if that cut on my head shows up as warmer than the, uh, where the plaster is. Um, it's there, isn't it? Can't really tell, to be honest, from this. A Fleur. Um, forward-looking infrared, a thermal camera, basically, to the, um, so F-L-I-R, forward-looking infrared, but a thermal camera is what most people know them as. What, what happened to me in terms of that? Well, I've got a cold and I've just got a cut on my head. It's, it's not anything dramatic. I've not been punched. It wasn't anything fun. It's just, um, I had a cut there and it just started bleeding a bit earlier, so I put a plaster on because I didn't want it just to start randomly bleeding when I was doing something. Uh, this one I got for £400, unknown Russian. The retail price of these is about $600 or pounds, but I found one with a slightly damaged box that was for sale for like £200 less, so I snapped it up. No, I haven't seen that peach. Right, let me just see. Is the coffee mug cooled down yet? Uh, still not completely. The bottom of the coffee mug is still... Wow, what I should have done, unknown Russian, is done a stream like Mike did. Cord Area 51 raid, because then I might have had a thousand odd people watching it at one point. But it was stupid and barely anyone turned up, did they? But yeah, anyway, let's have a look back through that knife drawer. We'll just flick the flare off again. I'm almost tempted to go out after I finish streaming and use the flare, but I don't think I'll bother, to be honest, tonight, because I've got the cold and I'd have to put a bit a few more clothes on rather than like lounging around clothes. Right, so let's go through the knife drawer. Let's just see what knives are in there. So this is one I really like. I got this from Blades and Bows, and this is kind of just like a classic sheath knife kind of one. It was a very cheap one, but this is actually a really good knife. So, um, yeah, this is kind of like an EDC knife if ever I'm out in the woods and want to do stuff with that. Because um, as I said, it's one of those knives you couldn't legally carry it on you without an excuse. But there's that. So there's that knife. The AKM bayonet, the East German one. Sturmgewehr 57 bayonet, which is Swiss, by the way. It's not Austrian or German. Um, because obviously the Swiss also speak German, so that's why it's Sturmgewehr. 
Um, here's a really good practical knife. I've got two of these bought from Blades and Bows. Umarex ones that are basically a rip-off of the Moras. So it's like a kind of bright orange survival knife. Has a very tight fitting sort of plastic sheath. Depends what you mean by infrared uh, chin strap, Bob. If you mean like the FLIR I've got, yes. If you mean infrared as in shortwave infrared, like classic night vision, you get that for under 100 now. You can even get some cheap cameras that can see infrared, just not very well. Um, my Enlan lock knife. This isn't as good as my other two lock knives, so I don't use this one as much, but it's still a nice knife. Keep it in that drawer. This bloody um, Miltech or MTech, whatever it is, uh, K-Bar, which I can never get sharp, ended up taking a chunk out of it because it had really shit heat treatment when I tried to grind it properly. So I really wouldn't really use this for anything. The weird thing, it has a really nice stack leather handle. So as a genuine stack leather handle, it's just a shame the knife had really shit heat treatment and came like totally blunt from the factory. Reasonable price for an S10, 30 to 60 pounds or dollars sort of price range. Again, it's going to depend where you are in the world. Uh, so is that one. Fairbind Sykes, as you know, this is one of my favourite knives. Sort of commando dagger. Not that I've got really any practical purposes for it. Throwing knives, barely used them. I ought to try throwing knives at some point, but oh, they're technically meant to all go in one sec different section, aren't they? In there, but um, yes, yeah, so that one goes there, that one goes in there, that one goes there, and then do that up. So, yeah, throwing knives. I don't know if I've ever featured in a video before, but they're there. Oh, yeah, here we go. This is one they call a zombie knife, isn't it? Despite it not being a zombie knife. Um, another one of those, uh, what was it, ones? But, um, yeah, it's another one of those, like, Bud K ones. The thing I actually hate about this knife is that big handguard, because I found a lot of the time, if I ever try and do anything of this in videos, the handguard hits my hand and it always hurts my hand, because the handguard's kind of like a really shit kind of sharp bit of steel. Um, originally, zombie knives were these bright green knives that had words like kill and mutilate on. Uh, the UK media threw a fit over them saying they were encouraging knife crime, so the UK government banned zombie knives. But in reality, they were just like low quality knives that were bright green. But then the media started calling any knife that looked scary a zombie knife. Um, what else is in here? This knife I really like. Um... This is like a master cutlery one or something. This is actually a really good field knife. Um, let me get the thing off. There you go. This is like in a series Blades and Bows used to do at one point. So it's Survivor, um, stainless steel made in China. I think this was called United Cutlery or Master Cutlery or something like that. But this is actually a really good Rambo style knife, K-Bar style knife, whatever you want to call them. Like this one, I've actually, you know, battened some wood with it and everything, and it's not broken. It's got a really nice sort of strong plastic, you know, it's like gun plastic, whatever they call it, handle and all that. See a little bit of pumpkin on there that I never managed to clean off fully. Don't know if there's any pumpkin. Oh, yeah, there's still a little bit of pumpkin look there on the serrated edge where I hacked the pumpkin up with it one Halloween. Yeah, exactly, Richard. Like we were saying before, like the uh, zombie hose and all that, which I guess people could take to mean something else entirely. All right, see you. See you leaving, Zeus. Have a nice evening. Several different things, unknown Russian. One of them is YouTube. One's working weekends. So I'm back from work from the weekend now. I also do charity volunteering on Thursdays. Um, but yeah, this is actually quite a good knife. Um, so I'd recommend this one if they ever turn up anywhere. But they were, for the low price these cost, these are actually really well-made knives. Um, VZ56 bayonet I've shown. The pig sticker's meant to be in here, but it's come out. So let me shove it back through there. I think it goes through this way, doesn't it? Rather than the other way. It might have been the other way. Yeah, I think it was. Hang on. Yeah, it would be. It's that way, isn't it? Because that bit 
sort of clasps on there, that's what catches it, and then it's, yeah, so you've got it in its little scabbard. So that's that. Got a bit of cosmolino grease on my hands. And the last knife I have in there is that um, Sheffield Steel Israeli um, commando knife, which is like a very well-made K-Bar kind of clone. Actually has a better tang than the K-Bar, just to point that out, because K-Bars have slightly shit tangs. I like K-Bars, but they're one of those knives where for the amount of money they cost, they're not all that durable. Um, so yeah, that's what's in the knife drawer. So that's all the knives. So what I'll do is just put all those knives to the back of the drawer. What I should do really is put the best ones at the top and the ones I get out the least at the bottom, but I'm too lazy to do that. So um, that's all those. Oh, there's the one more knife in there I didn't show you, which I took out near the beginning. Uh, where was it? Let's hang on. It's in here. And this one's that knife Bart got me from Morocco. The Benedin knife, whatever it is. Some of you have seen this before. It's not in particularly good condition, but it's just one of those interesting little tribal knives. So I just keep that in the presentation box. So there's that. So I'll lay that flat in there. So I can put the other things around it. And then in terms of filters in there, I have got an FP5 filter, which is one I sometimes use in videos that I've opened. But, you know, close that back up. Um, uh, another FP5 filter that's sealed, and it runs out in 2022. So obviously I'm keeping that sealed until I need it. So that's good. Put that back in there. Polish FP211 filters, isn't it? Um, which is, yeah, FP211s, which are sort of like ABE versions of the FP5. The one I was doing videos on before I even knew the FP5 was a thing. Uh, so there's that one. That's one I sometimes use in videos to do like normalised tests to see if these filters, um, you know, fit on different Gost and NATO masks. So we'll put those back there. Um... The Swiss filter that the SM67 and the SM73, or whatever they're called, I've forgotten the names, came with. So a 40mm filter that has that kind of orange-red bit around there, which I like the look of, but um, I've never opened it. 60mm Finnish M61 filters. I have a couple of different ones of these. Um, yeah, my local surplus store, when they used to sell these, they used to be 150 each. Yeah, these are quite nice filters, the um, Finnish 60mm ones. Are very well made for what they are, but obviously, unfortunately, obsolete design. But um, it looks more like they use a cotton pad kind of particle filter in there rather than the Heap one, but that makes sense due to the age. But yeah. Certain surplus stores will sell cheap filters that are out of date for um, really cheap amounts of money just because that way they can shift them. So if you ever go to a surplus store, what I was doing is just checking the ones which were properly sealed when I was in there, because what you could do at the time was press that in and see you know, how much give it would give, see if it was still airtight. Um, and then I was just buying a few at 150. I think I bought two from there, plus I had one originally in my M61. So that's that one. It's just packaging with the FT5. There's this one, Spaziani. So this will be the same filter that Mike opened the other day, the ABEC, free, ABEC 2P3, although mine's got a sticker on I don't think it's had. This runs out in 2014. Um, so mine's technically run out, but I might as well keep it in the foil. Actually, I'll tell you what, because the filter is individually sealed in this, let's just uh, open this up. Because the thing is with this filter, if I take it out the bag... It makes more room in my um, filter drawer. So that's the good thing. In that sense that opening filters up saves a bit of room. So I wouldn't do it with the ones that are still in date. But these ones that are a bit out of date. Because the filters are still going to be individually sealed. There's no point keeping them in the actual bag really. So yeah, it's that really weird shaped filter. I kind of like the look of this. Because it reminds me of some of the retro filters. But... Yeah, that's all sealed. So, yeah, I assume it's the same dates on here. Yeah, runs out 07-2014. But, yeah, still would probably work. Pop that 
one back in. Damn, um, tell you what, I'll pop the instructions. I don't think I ever referred to them, but loose in the drawer. Then I'll just bin this foil bag now. All right, what else is in there? Scott GSR filters. Um, technically, these were manufactured and sealed 2008. And they're meant to last till 2023, but there's a problem. There's a rip in the fucking bag. So, um, there you go, look. So, the filters aren't really sealed all that well, are they? Tell you what, because they're not sealed all that well, let's do the same thing. Let's cut them open, get them out this bag. Because there's already a hole in the foil, so why not? See, this is the problem with the Scott GSR filters. They don't actually um, have individual things sealing them. So that they're, they're literally, that's one of the things I really didn't like with a lot of Scott filters. They just put them in a the bag. So as soon as you get a tear in the bag, the filter's exposed to the air anyway. Yeah, produced in 2008. There's nothing else in there, is there? No. Right, I'll just bin this bag. Locking stuff over on my desk. So, um, yeah, pop these back in there. Spare GSR filters. I think GSR filters look cool. It's a shame these don't work unless you connect them to a mask. I mean, there's probably a way of modifying these filters so they do. But, because I was just thinking, maybe you could force these into cheap filter masks. But yeah, the flare works really well. I'll talk about it in a second again. Let me just put these back in the drawer. So they're in this drawer. Um, put them in so they take up not much space. By Yeah, that's better. Now they're separate. I can do that. And then the filter that came with the MSA Hour, which is a combination filter. It's individually done up. It's run out in 2013. As this one's expired, again, I'm going to do the same thing, remove the bag. Because at least if I remove the bag on this as well, if I ever needed the filters in an emergency, there's not a bag in the way. Um, and I tried to get the filter out. So might as well do that. I know some people are really funny about removing things like this from the bag, but to be honest, I'm like, as these are expired anyway, technically, I just want to be able to get out the filter as quickly as possible in an emergency if I needed them. I'm going to keep, obviously, FP5 filter that's still got, like, three years left on the date in the bag, but also it means if I want to put them in a gas mask satchel, it's a bit handier. So, yeah, there's this one. Is this actually a particulate filter as well? Yeah, it is. It didn't actually say that on the bag, but... Oh, it's even HG, this one. A Beck, so A B E two K one H G P three. Oh, that's fairly good. It's not a K two filter, but it's pretty good one. So yeah, let me pop that back in the drawer now, and then I'll show you what the drawer looks like now. I've tidied it a bit. All right, there you go. There's the drawer now. I've given it a bit of a tidy. And I tell you what, because I've still got a bit of room in this drawer, what I'm going to do is um, this Scott filter I've got on the side of the shelf here, because that won't take up much room, the particle filter. I'll just pop that in there because I've, I've got more than one of these, so I might as well just put that in there. So there we go. That's the bayonet and filter drawer a lot tidier. By Metro Gas Mask, you mean the PPM88, don't you? And yes, I do. Right, I should tell you what, I won't do that during the stream, because I'll need to get everything out of the way to, you know, get on the floor and put the drawer back in the thing. But yeah, there we go. That's that drawer tidied. Right, let me go back to the comments. Done that, Harris, in the video twice. Are there any specific DOS thread filters that you would recommend for people who are getting them shipped to the US for cheap? Right, distinct. The only things I can recommend is, because you have to probably buy them in bulk, um, either the Ch modern Chinese or modern Russian filters, because they're goss still, um, and they're good filters. Well, they're, I'm not going to keep explaining this. There's a little cut on my head, and if I take the plaster off, it might start bleeding again. I didn't want to, you know, in the stream, get a bit of blood coming out and then having to run off. It's weird. Nobody noticed the plaster when I had it on that little spot thing the other day, but as soon as I've got one there, everybody's like, oh, what's going on? Yeah, the flare works really well, that guy. Um, I'm going to do a review of it properly, though. Um, 
fairly soon, but I still want to play about with it a bit more before I do a review so I can do the pros and cons with a bit more thought to them. But yeah, the Fleer is really good. Um, but obviously, again, without going into loads of detail, there are pros and cons of it that you're probably aware of if you know about thermal imaging. Um, and you also have to take into consideration what's on the market at the moment, which is not much in the way of thermal cameras around the price of the FLIR Scout. That's cool. So if you didn't see it earlier, I did get it out very briefly in the stream earlier. The nice thing is this turns on really quickly. So um, it's not like um, it's a bit annoying to get out. So there you can see it's loading up. And then I'll be glowing in the dark. There we go. When um, uh, just to show the people who were looking earlier, I bet that mug's cooled down now. Yeah, see the mugs uh, no longer glowing orange at the bottom because I where, where I've drunk the coffee from the bottom of the mug, it's no longer warm. Um, so you've got a few different color palettes on there. I'll just go through all of them if I get that lined up. So that's Amber Alert, I think it's called. Then there's a more orange one. Even greater orange one. Iron, which is like a purple orange kind of filter one. Let's see if I can line that up a bit better. Sorry. It's quite hard to line this up. There we go. Lava. Rain. I quite like this one. Makes you have a 3.6 wrong gun face. Color wheel, like Predator. Then the classic white hot, black hot. And then we're back through to Amber Alert. Or Insta Alert, they call it. It's basically Insta Alert is white hot. It's just the hottest colors rather than being bright white or orange and yellow. So in theory, a person in an environment actually glows orange, not white. So you can tell them. Yeah, there's a fox in one of the videos I've done, Peach. But yeah, I'll be going out and using this quite a lot. Because one of the good things about this is it will just get me going out the house a bit more and just doing, you know, cool shit with it. That's that's annoying, modifying an S6 so somebody can get their rocks off. That's a shame, Richard. Yeah, I've heard of him. He did the PVC pipe videos, didn't he, on those that were quite popular a while ago. Yeah, it's a shame because it was all that bloody... You know, that's why I fucking hate journalists in some degree. Like, not proper journalists, but all this journalism now where they just get people into trouble to make a story, you know, and write all this slanderous stuff about people. Where they made up all these things about YouTube creators, like encouraging terrorism or whatever shit they did that got lots of us into trouble. And for those of you that haven't seen that, just so I can prove it, right. Right, so if I flick the lights off, just so I can prove that this will work in any light conditions, obviously it's fairly dark there. I can't really flick the screen off because if I flick the screen off, I can't see if it's lined up properly. I actually tell you what, I can put that there. I can then, when it's in frame, flick the screen off for a few seconds, then flick it back on. But so you can still see me absolutely fine there. Um, and if I move out of the way, you should still be able to see the wall behind me absolutely fine. I mean, obviously, it's not ideal, is it? Because you're looking at a um, tiny little preview window through a um, thing. But you'll be able to see the wall behind me absolutely fine. Obviously, the posters won't look the same as the eye. Let me just set it to white hot, because that's a bit easier to see. There we go. All right, so... That's me look glowing in the dark. And then there's the wall behind me. You see the gas masks up there? I think that's the GP5 glowing white. Let me have a quick look, actually. Which ones look like what? Actually saying that all the gas masks have absorbed a similar level of heat, so they're all the same. The only difference on there is the Soviet children's masks. The PDF has a bit of a black outline around the eyes where the metal is colder because uh, it's set to white hot. Um, but then if I flick the monitor off a second, see, so that, that's me there. If I flick my monitor off, I should look the same there. 
if I take this away, you'll see that the room's really dark now because it's only a little light from the computer. Um, so anyway, I'll flick that back on because I can't see what you're saying now. But um, yeah, that should prove that these work in total darkness if you needed to uh, see that. Yeah, I certainly get one, but I can't afford to spend thousands of dollars on them. Um, but stuff like that will keep coming down in price as technology improves. That's a thing to bear in mind of all like night vision kind of stuff. And, you know, that sort of gear is these sort of flare cameras. If you go back a few years ago were several thousand pounds. Now they do this model, which I got for 400, but the RRP is about 600 pounds dollars on them. Um, and I've got the night Fox, um, sort of night vision camera. And yeah, it's kind of equivalent of a Gen 0 slash Gen 1 night vision device because uh, it's digital, not analog. But again, for what, say, essentially an active infrared but also works as a passive infrared device, that's, again, you can get those under £100 now. So this stuff is coming down in price. It's just because there's not mass markets for it. It doesn't come down in prices like reg much as regular cameras. But, you know. I wonder what a panoramic mask looks like on this all the lenses. So let me just try it. Let, I should tell you what, I won't do a panoramic mask. Let me just put this on. I want to see how the heat thing works if I put it up to the camera. So let's get this back on. I will do a video at some point of loads of different masks as seen through the flare while they're being worn, because a few people have asked me to do that. So uh, I think that'll be an interesting video, but... Right. So just loading up. So you can see my skin's really hot compared to the mask. But the longer I wear the mask, the warmer it will get. Now I bet the exhale valve, I can't really see myself because I'm trying to look at the screen and all that at the same time. But I bet the exhale valve is actually warmer than the rest of the mask. So, um, tell you what, I'll leave that on for a minute, then we'll turn the flare back on, and then we'll see uh, what, if the masks change colour, because colour, I think that'll be quite interesting. Pretty much any kind of glass or plastic will confuse flares, because the flare sees the temperature of the glass, not what's behind it. So, um, if that makes sense, Richard, I mean, with regular night vision... It wouldn't make a difference, um, but it would reflect back light, which might give it away. But in terms of um, a flare, a flare can't actually see through glass because it doesn't see light. It sees heat. So if you ever look in a mirror or like a piece of glass with a flare, it actually just looks like a solid color or like a color gradient where it just sees the heat. Right. So that's oh, I didn't actually turn it off properly. Then. That's fine. All right. So let's. Open that again, and let's see, is the mask starting to change colour now, the more I wear it? Because after a while, obviously, the mask will warm up on your face, and then it won't be as... Tell you what, let me unscrew the filter, because I want to see if the exhale valve actually looks warm. Sorry, it's quite hard to wind this up properly, the uh, flow of the thing. How does that look if you can see it? Oh, hang on. Can you see the hot air escaping from the mask? Or does it just look um, the same? Because I'd actually have to put the camera on the surface and film with it to work out for myself. I think you can see that the mask is changing colour. Let me just change the colour palettes a second. Okay, so there's actually a bit more heat around these bits, as you can see. Now, if I put my hand on the mask and hold it there, what will actually happen? Oops, I've misaligned the camera. When I take that away, look, you'll see the handprint on the mask because the hand's warmed up that bit of the mask. But, um... Oh, yeah, you can see that's actually warming up now. But, um...
Yeah, that's the interesting thing. Look, you can always see where heat's been left on something. So let's just say I leave my hand on there for a moment, like that. When I take my hand off, see, you get a handprint that stays there. And similarly, if I get out my chair, I don't know if this will actually be aiming at the chair. Hang on. See where my ass was in the chair? See, it's hot there. So you can see where people, you can actually see people's footsteps at night with this. It's pretty cool. So yeah, flares are really cool, but, um, you know, as I said, there's pros and cons to using them as compared to conventional night vision. Right, let's get that off again. Yeah, so that's one of the things I find coolest with the flare is that you can literally aim it where somebody's been sitting or laying down or whatever, and you can see where their body's been because they've left heat on an object, which is kind of really cool and creepy. Um, yeah, I'll put this um, filter back on the shelf now. Right, I've been on for an hour, so I'll probably go off fairly soon because I said I've got a cold. It seems the last half of the stream. I've not been having, you know, as much sort of stuff caught in my throat or whatever. But, um, yeah, tomorrow I've got a panto rehearsal. But if my cold's too bad, I won't bother going. So um, I may or may not stream tomorrow. I probably will. But the only issue is obviously where I've got a cold. I don't know how much I'll be feeling like doing a stream. But um, there'll be still the videos being made for, like, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday and all that. And then I said... Any additional stuff I shoot with the flare, I'll just put on as extra videos. Um, although when I was looking at my YouTube analytics earlier, the crazy thing is when I was looking at revenue made by videos, I realized just how much better lighter videos are than gas mask videos, as much as obviously I find gas masks a lot more interesting. I like lighters, obviously, and collect them, but, um, you know, that there were individual lighter videos that make between, have made between like $500 and $1,000 since I originally uploaded them. Most gas mask videos <laughs> never make anything like that. Anyway, is the chat still working? Because I haven't seen any messages in a while. Um, but anyway, I said I'm going off in a minute anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But Are you on Twitch tonight, Mike, or are you waiting until Monday? Oh, thanks, Bartos. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Mike. That's what I was wondering if the... Call that a knife. This is a knife. Monday, right, cool. Uh, if I'm at the rehearsal, I won't be on till gone 10. Um, 10 30 sort of time, but if I'm not, then I'll be on earlier. But as I said, it depends how my cold and everything feels tomorrow because I can't really go on a stage and shout across the stage for a panto kind of rehearsal with my, how my throat is at the moment. But, um, you know, I managed work this weekend at least, so there's that. And I've got my doctor's appointment tomorrow morning, which will hopefully sort out me out on some more effective tablets for the ulcerative colitis. Um, it's Mother Goose, but like, you know, typical piss take panto adaption of Mother Goose. Oh, yeah, Zippo's now officially doing butane inserts, aren't they, and all that, and electric inserts. Somebody said to me in the comments on the video. Orient Mako 2, that's the watch I'm wearing. Yeah, I know, Bartos, but the thing is, I'm not going to bother updating those videos till I've got a couple of extra ones. Otherwise, it seems a bit pointless to do, you know, one with an e one extra mask. But my Polish and American collections are quite a lot bigger than the last time. But I'll leave it a while and definitely do an update on those. Yeah, unfortunately, Boisterous, it is just about to end. I'll stay on an extra minute for you if you want to ask a question or something. But I was just going off. Yeah, isn't it? That clock's now said nine o'clock. I was going to say that's a bit delayed. Yeah, I've seen the original My Bloody Valentine. I couldn't even dare to watch the remake, but in the original, he has an Acme Clear Vision or whatever it's called, or Acme Full Vision. In the remake, he has a GP7, doesn't he? So that mask in the remake. Well, there's Mark V gas masks on the poster for the remake for some reason. 
Yeah, that has cultural critique, but I'm just saying in general because YouTube demonetizes a lot of gas mask stuff and doesn't promote it very well. Um, if I do a random lighter video, it's always a financially better choice for me. Yeah, I've still got the Ben 4 GP. All the masks I've ever done videos on, I still have. Um, except the ones I gave Mike recently, but they were duplicates of other masks anyway. Although I can't always find masks. You know, when people say, where's this mask? I'm trying to remember. There'll be a video coming out in the next few days that shows how I store the masks in my collection. And when you're watching that video, you might actually sort of think, oh, yeah, that's why he can't find masks sometimes when he's asked about them. Just because it's, you know, where I store them here, there and everywhere because I don't have enough space. I actually watched Troll 2 the other day, Harris, and I didn't think it was as bad as people made out. But maybe that's because I've seen so many shitty films recently that Troll 2 seems good. Um... I'm trying to think what the worst... There was one that was really bad I watched called Hesperia or some... Not Susperia, that's a really good film, Susperia. It's called Hesperia or something like that. And oh my god, the acting in that was like the fucking room. That it wasn't even funny to watch. Nilgob. <laughs> or Nilbog, isn't it? Nilbog. Oh yeah, the Fog remake is absolutely terrible. You're right, Rich. Although I think the Fog remake may have been better than this Hesperia film I watched. And I reckon this Hesperia film had like fake reviews on the Amazon page and the IMDb page because there were so many glowing like 10 out of 10s, even though the people act in the film like this. And not like they're pretending to be William Shatner. I just mean like they have really, really bad line delivery. And, you know, it's just a really, really poorly done film. Yeah, Neil Breen. I think Neil Breen would have done a better film, though. But, yeah, I ought to, as a joke, at some point, watch the Neil Breen movies. I've seen, like, the Red Letter Media reviews of Neil Breen and that, but I've never watched them myself. But, yeah. Oh, hi, doggy. Oh, hi, Mark. I did not hit her. I did not. I mean, the only bit from Troll 2 I really knew room for before watching it was, they're eating her, and then they're going to eat me. Oh, my God. That's the only bit of the film that I, um you know, could renew in a sense, although I'm sure I'd seen other clips from it. Um, but, yeah, the thing is, re-watching Troll 2, at least it had, like, actual sets and some practical effects, even if they were shit. I can kind of admire a film for that. There's so many, like, direct-to-DVD shit films now that just have awful special effects and awful acting. I watched Shit K. Sinner on YouTube. It's quite good. I actually bought his book the other day. One of his fiction books he's done. Which I've nearly finished now, so no spoilers. But, um... Like a horror one. But, um... You see, I've got through it pretty quickly since buying it last week. So that means it's actually a good book. Because I don't read fiction very often. But, yeah, Johnny Shit Case, his uh, videos are quite good. Where he just takes the piss out of, um... You know, like, really old shitty films. Like, lots of them being Italian or Turkish or whatever. Not sure, Peach. Yeah, Mike linked me to a bit from that, Chris, with uh, one wrong way down a one-way street or whatever it was, because I said to him I nearly got killed by a bus going the wrong way down a one-way street, and he linked me to the song. Oh, and you can't piss on hospitality is another line I really like from Troll 2. But, um... Yeah, anyway, I'll be off now. I probably ought to take some cough medicine because my voice has gone really hoarse. Um, and not as in hoarse as in my long face horse. Yeah, Chernobyl was very good. I did a video showing what some of the gas masks were in Chernobyl. Um, but yeah, I've got the Blu-ray. That I, I was thinking this week I might re-watch all of Chernobyl, actually, because I haven't watched the Blu-ray yet since buying it. Because I watched it when it first came out, you know, watching each episode the day they came out. Then um, I rewatched the series a couple of weeks later, and now the Blu-ray's out, and I bought the Blu-ray. I might actually rewatch it all on Blu-ray. Seems I've bought it, I might as well rewatch it. <laughs> Although in reality, after that situation, I thought, "Shit, I nearly died." Then you know, just simply because a bus fucking drove the wrong way down a one-way street at like thirty miles per hour while I was crossing the road. <laughs> 
And like, I just glanced that way and I haven't really looked that way properly because it was a one way road, which is always a fucking stupid mistake to make. And then all of a sudden, fucking bus nearly hits me. And the driver didn't beep the horn or anything, so he obviously wasn't paying attention either. So anyway, um, I'll be off. Thanks, everybody. It's been an enjoyable stream. So, um, yeah, as I said, I'll be streaming and doing videos pretty much as normal this week as you'd expect. But there might be, like last week, some extra videos on where I just do some random footage of the Flare and I want to put that up just as bonus videos for the people that want to watch Flare footage. Um, but, yeah, otherwise, as I said, because I've got a cold, it might end up me not talking all that well on the stream. I don't know. Right, yeah, cool. Is that Polish for goodbye or good evening? Um, because the Dobry bit is, uh, or Dobra is the, uh, good bit, isn't it, in Polish, in some other Slavic languages. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll let you answer that, Bartosz, before I go off, if you're still on. Good evening. Ah, cool, I was sort of correct. I was just trying to work it out from knowing what Jim Dobry was, but yeah. Anyway, right, see everybody. Have a good evening, and I will, um, probably be on the stream if I'm well enough tomorrow, and then videos as usual during the week. Right, good night.